Hi, I'm Alex and this is Tank Tested. Today I want to share with you kind of a different style aquarium than we're used to seeing on this channel. This tank is somewhere between a jungle style aquascape and a farm tank for plants and fish. Before we get into this fish tank in earnest, I want to highlight that this is just one of several fish tanks in Chris's fish room. In fact, we've already looked at three on this channel. We saw this bonsai-inspired show tank, complete with gold garami and a moss treetop. We saw this high-tech grow tank that's home to rare plants and filled with extraordinarily vivid colors. And we saw this massive Amazon-inspired aquascape. Links to all three are in the description below. But I wanted to highlight those other tanks because the tank we're about to see is such an outlier. It's intentionally overgrown and it's a bit of a retirement community for Chris's fish. Now, here's Chris, but I'll be chiming in throughout this video to fill in some of the details. My name is Chris Weinhold and this is my fish room. So the, the fish room has evolved over the last uh, year or two. I needed to find some place to put all this other stuff and the 120 kind of volunteered itself uh, to take on some of those plants and some of those fish. This is a big tank. It's four feet long, two feet wide, and two feet deep. And it's pretty much the perfect retirement community for the fish in Chris's fish room. When a show tank like Chris's bonsai tank reaches the end of its life and gets broken down, the fish find a new home here. So I guess the ones that are probably most striking are the Maliwe cribs. I guess they're now Crebensis Maliwe. I got them uh, when I was giving a talk up at, to some clubs up in uh, Wisconsin. One of the members there was breeding the heck out of them, and uh, I saw them in his tank, and he uh, offered to send me a few. So I think I got a six-pack from him, and these are maybe some of the same and some descendants from those as well. But they're very, very uh, striking fish. Ones you probably don't see that are in there, uh, and actually quite a few should be in there. There's coolie loaches, which you never see. In fact, they end up in the filter half the time. There's uh, at least half a dozen uh, zebra upside down catfish, which I really, really like. There are also quite a few uh, glass fish. Um, and otherwise, there's uh, white clouds and a few different varieties of danios. But this tank isn't just a beautiful overgrown jungle for the fish. It's also a farm tank for plants. Some of these plants are just here waiting to be used in Chris's next aquascape, and others are occasionally harvested for auction at my local plant club, Guapa. One of the most striking plants in this tank is the lotus plant in the foreground. It's a nice, very easy to grow lotus. It spreads by runners, so as is evidence in that tank, uh, once you have it in a few places, it kind of fills in all the gaps in between and then some. It's actually a pretty nice uh, mid-ground plant, and if you really aggressively trim it, you can keep even smaller. Uh, it's an all-around nice plant, it's just haven't managed to use it in uh, any of my current scapes. Another plant worth noting in this scape is the circular Ludwigia that you can see in the center of this shot. So this was a uh, Ludwigia repens, um, and it's actually one that we found down in Florida. Uh, but this was a case where what we saw, it seemed to have rounder leaves, which is not typical for repens. Uh, so we took a stem or two, and sure enough, it kept that leaf form you know, growing submerged. And it's a very easy to grow plant, and it's something different than what you'd be able to buy otherwise. There are literally dozens of plants in this tank, and I just don't have time or the footage to go through them all. So I'll leave you with this thought. Tanks like this are beautiful in their own right. It's not a traditional aquascape, but it has a sense of chaos and feels organic in a way that most aquascapes just won't allow for. I hope you enjoyed this look back at Chris's fish room, and if you did, consider subscribing. And if you really want to support me, you can find me on Patreon. All of these people make this channel possible, but I want to give a special thanks to Pieter Anthony for their support. Thank you. Now, if you haven't seen all the videos in Chris's fish room, check out this playlist.